Limited release food products. Now some of these snacks are stuff of legend, while others, not so much. Regardless, anyone with a pulse has at least experienced trying out a bizarre combination of their favorite snack, only for it to disappear and presume you fever dreamed it this entire time. But then, some 15 years later, you notice a post from a random stranger on social media saying, Hey, y'all remember these? Just for a neuron activation of nostalgia making you go, Oh yeah, I remember. So, in today's video, I thought it'd be fun to go through an iceberg of products that were once available in the United States but are now memories of a bygone era. Sorry, everyone else. With that being said, get comfy and grab your 30-year-old can of New Coke because this is part one of the Discontinued Food and Snacks Iceberg. <coughs> Disregard that last thing. Don't do that. Let's just go on with the video. I see Ecto Cooler. Slimer's new food drink. You've been warned. Starting off this list is High C Ecto Cooler. This was the drink first released in 1987. Prior to that, it was previously called High C Citrus Cooler, which had been in store since 1965. Following the release of the animated series The Real Ghostbusters, it was rebranded to Ecto Cooler, where it would become popular among children and adults and outlast its original promotion run where it would be sold up until 2001. According to some blogs, Ecto Cooler was described to have tasted like orange and tangerines, with no artificial flavors. Since its discontinuation, many fans have learned to recreate the drink for themselves, often being a popular drink served during Halloween parties. In 2016, Coca-Cola will re-release Ecto Cooler to promote the Ghostbusters reboot and once again in 2021 as a limited release to promote Ghostbusters Afterlife. And well, with the age of the internet, scalpers would stockpile this drink and sell them for inflated prices on eBay, just rotting away in someone's attic. What, what, what if you're drinking a regular Pepsi and somebody's coming at you with a knife? Huh? You won't be able to see him past your Pepsi. And then, and, then, and then who's dead, huh? You! You! You're dead! Stamp! Crystal Pepsi. Crystal Pepsi was a soft drink created by PepsiCo that was available between 1992 and 1994. According to taste tests, its flavor resembled Pepsi without the caramel coloring, making it less acidic. If I may add, I think when this drink came out in 2016, I vividly remember it tasting like 7-Up, but I digress. While popular at first, it did have some trouble keeping momentum, and due to low sales, as well as the desire for regular Pepsi, the drink will be discontinued and is often regarded as one of the biggest marketing flops, spending over $40 million in advertising campaign, including a Super Bowl ad, which included Van Halen's hit song, Right Now. Despite the drink being available for two years, it would have a cult following and get a limited time release in 2016, as well as a contest to celebrate its 30th anniversary. Bankaroos is a cookie you can dance for as much frosting as you want. So how do you do your Bankaroos? Dunkaroos are these snacks that came in a turquoise package with cookies on one side and a small jar of icing on the other. They were first released in 1990 by the Betty Crocker Company and sadly were discontinued in 2012. The reason being that Dunkaroos were holding on to a small percentage of the market, making it harder to find it in stores. Another reason might have been due to the nutritional info, as the frosting, while delicious, was probably not the best thing worth digesting. Yet it wouldn't be long until they returned in May of 2020, with the sugar being reduced slightly. Regular and new family size. Cheese balls, just as the name implies, are bite-sized flavored cheese balls. I'm pretty sure you've seen knockoffs of these at stores before, but looking into the early history of cheese balls is a bit fuzzy as trying to find a definitive year on when this hit store shelves is unknown. But it led to a wormhole of other Planters products that I didn't even know existed. In the 1970s, Planters, the company most known for their peanuts, created their line of snacks such as pretzel twists, corn chips, and even potato chips that reminisce of Pringles. A rivalry I'm not sure people even knew existed. Over the years, some of these products would be discontinued, with the exception of the cheesy snacks, becoming a popular snack of the 80s and 90s. But by 2006, the product would quietly be discontinued. It wouldn't be until 12 years later that cheese balls would make a full return. As the better taste, let's look at it this way. We gave America a choice, and more people said, Coke is it. It's a hit. It's a Coke. The story of New Coke is just as iconic as the Bible itself. In the 1970s, Pepsi launched a campaign dubbed the Pepsi Challenge in which representatives from Pepsi would place kiosks in malls and shopping centers with non-labeled cups, one side with Coke and the other being Pepsi. Mall goers would be selected to blind taste test the two drinks and choose what was their favorite. In the end, it was revealed that Pepsi was significantly more popular than Coke, which would give them bragging rights to boast about them being the most popular soda in America. 
The campaign was proven to be effective and throughout the late 70s and early 80s, Pepsi would be as popular as Coke. For context guys, Pepsi wasn't as big prior to the Pepsi challenge, so Coca-Cola didn't take the idea of Pepsi being the better product very lightly. Uh, they actually went for a more bolder approach. In 1985, for the first time in its 99 year history, Coca-Cola would change their recipe and introduce a new beverage dubbed New Coke. This product received massive backlash from fans of the old recipe and after three months on shelves, executives at Coca-Cola would announce the return of the original formula. What we didn't know was how many thousands of you would phone and write asking us to bring back the classic taste of original Coca-Cola. Well, we read and we listened and you know the rest. They're both yours, the new taste of Coke and Coca-Cola Classic. Following this stint, sales for Coca-Cola Classic would skyrocket. As for New Coke, it would later be rebranded to Coke 2 in 1992 and eventually be discontinued 10 years later. Since then, New Coke has been a cautionary tale of how not to f up what already works. Despite it being 15 years since it was off the market, New Coke would be surrounded by an aura of mystery to a new generation. This raised the question of what it really tasted like. And in 2019, people got an opportunity to try it when New Coke made a brief comeback when it was sold online in limited quantities to promote the third season of Stranger Things. Mm. Jello brand pudding pops. All the goodness of real Jello pudding. So you know it's wholesome. Based on the description of this item myself, I would have eaten a whole box on my own if I'm being honest. Jello pudding pops are said to be this pudding popsicle with a rich taste and a gooey texture. Ah, I just drooled all over my table. Pudding pops were introduced in 1979 by General Foods, a defunct food manufacturer that was later merged into Kraft Foods. During their availability, they marketed the product by airing commercials featuring Bill Cosby. See how much fun your right hand is having. It won't want to be left out. Now you have to share Jello gelatin pops. Real Jello gelatin, only cooler. Yeah, even before the accusations, this is still really weird. However, the product would be massively popular and generate over $300 million annually after just five years on the market. Although it was generating money, they did not make any profit. The reason being was Jello was not in the frozen food business, making it more expensive and raking in less money. And by 2004, Jello Pudding Pops would be discontinued and later licensed to Popsicle, where they made their own version of Pudding Pops. Yet many pointed out that it didn't have the unique taste that the original one had, and it would be quietly discontinued in 2010. One of the things I want to find out is where the hell are the WWE ice cream bars? These ice cream bars, despite its simple concept, are one of those items in wrestling that has a cult-like status. And what it basically is was vanilla ice cream sandwiched between a layer of chocolate and a vanilla wafer cookie that included imprints of WWE superstars such as Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, Andre the Giant, and as well as some modern superstars like The Rock, John Cena, and Bobby Lashley. They would be on freezer shelves until 2009 where they were sadly discontinued. Yet they still live in spirit when WWE superstar CM Punk mentioned that he wanted his very own ice cream bar, something that even to this day is often mentioned by fans. WWE ice cream bars would make a brief comeback in 2020 20, although it is shaped differently and only featured four designs. Unfortunately, just like Rey Mysterio's WWE title reign, this was short-lived and quietly discontinued. Hey, Toucan Sam, how would you make milk more fun? Why, with Fruit Loop cereal straws, of course. Now, these are exactly what they sound like. Initially launched in 2007, Kellogg's released cereal straws in three varieties. Fruit Loops, Cocoa Krispies, and Apple Jacks. They were shaped as a tube with a milky inner lining, and the best part about these straws is that you can eat them once you finish the milk. While these were popular amongst kids, they would disappear two years later when a legal battle between Kellogg's and parents started brewing, citing concerns on issues of marketing sugary junk food to children. While this legal battle never mentioned cereal straws by name, Kellogg's chose to discontinue the product alongside other food items that did not meet standards. Over the years, nostalgic users would start making memes and discuss the cereal straws straws, eventually starting petitions demanding the cereal straws return. Whether that really did anything is up for debate, but luckily in 2021, Kellogg's would bring back cereal straws, albeit without the Apple Jacks variety. Fruitopia was a fruit flavored drink introduced by the Coca-Cola company in 1994, and it was meant to compete with Snapple. That statement doesn't hold a lot of merit considering that Snapple isn't as big as it used to be. You may not believe this, but that was a time when Snapple ruled the nation. Preposterous! The drink was marketed towards a younger and health conscious crowd and featured bizarre flavors such as citrus consciousness, strawberry passion awareness, and tangerine wavelength. Over the years, the drink would lose momentum and eventually in 2003, Fruitopia would be discontinued. However, it is still available in certain parts of the world. 
about this cool girl who sent to China. McDonald's is offering tender crispy chicken McNuggets and a new Szechuan sauce for a taste of the East. The McDonald's Szechuan sauce was a chicken McNugget dipping sauce that was originally released in 1998 to promote the animated movie Mulan. The sauce was created to mimic the traditional Chinese Szechuan sauce and was only released during the promotion of the movie. Once the Mulan promotion ended, all mentions of the Szechuan sauce would never be mentioned, and just when this sauce was about to disappear into obscurity in 2017 on the season 3 premiere of Rick and Morty, Rick goes back to 1998 to get Szechuan sauce for himself. Uh, oh, and, and also to like see his family get blown up or something, I don't know. Wow. This sauce is f***ing amazing. You said I was promoting a movie? Following this episode, I want that Mulan McNuggets sauce Morty would become a popular phrase around forums and on the internet. Eventually, McDonald's would re-release the sauce once again in 2018, and once again in 2022 as an app-only exclusive. As someone who was there to experience the sauce for myself, I honestly have to say it's not that bad. If this was a permanent menu item, I would probably order this over sweet and sour. Team up with Mr. T Mr. T cereal was basically a corn and oat cereal that was described to taste like Captain Crunch cereal and was shaped by the letter T. And if you weren't able to tell, uses the likeness of Mr. T. While the cereal was not the most exciting thing to eat, when they first hit grocery stores in 1984, they became a smash hit as at the time, Mr. T was a popular icon as he appeared in several shows and movies such as Rocky 3 and The A-Team. He would also take part in the main event of the first ever WrestleMania. Sadly, as time continued, Mr. T's popularity would decline and finally the cereal would be discontinued in 1993. Nesquik cereal is a chocolatey part of his good breakfast. Diabetes. Diabetes. Thank you, Wilford. Diabetes. Nesquik cereal is yet another breakfast cereal introduced in the United States in 1999. Since the introduction of Nesquik back in 1948, it became an iconic and recognizable brand. This allowed them to expand into other products such as bottled beverages, syrup bottles, and eventually breakfast cereal. Many described the cereal to be similar to Cocoa Puffs, which, because it was already an established brand, gave Nesquik cereal a hard time getting market share, and is possibly the cause for this product getting discontinued in 2012. If you still want to get the cereal for yourself, you can still buy these as they are still available in Canada, Mexico, and several other countries. In the 1980s, McDonald's was figuring out how to expand their menu, and soon McDonald's settled on the idea of introducing pizza. However, the McPizza had a lot of factors and fierce competition that ultimately led to the item being removed. Although the product did enjoy some popularity, it was removed from the menu altogether in 2000 because it took 11 to 16 minutes to prepare, which caused problems with the restaurant's reputation for quick service, not to mention the price. While a standard burger cost at 75 cents at the time, a McPizza was 8 to 12 times more expensive. Pretty sure anyone would want to settle for a burger instead. Today, the only way to get a McPizza is if you drive to the world's largest entertainment McDonald's, located in Orlando. Florida. Mm, the outrageous taste is part of this good breakfast. Oreo oh, O's. Cool. Take your butt to the mat. In 1997, both Post Cereals and Nabisco teamed together to create Oreo O's, an Oreo flavored cereal which rocked store shelves for an entire decade. And my god, these were so good. The cereal was very popular, and the reason why it was discontinued was because of a corporate divorce in 2007 between Kraft Foods, which owned the rights to the Oreo name, and Post Cereals, which owned the rights to the recipe. Because of this, the brand could no longer produce the cereal, and for the next 10 years, Oreo O's would be unavailable to purchase in the US. Although, while the cereal was discontinued, the only country still making it was South Korea. This was because of a loophole between the distribution rights of Oreo O's. Dongsu Foods, the company behind the Korean Oreo O's, was a joint venture between General Foods and Dongsu companies. In 1989, Kraft Foods would merge with General Foods, which would make Kraft owner of half Dongsu Foods stock. This made Dongsu Foods the only company with both licenses required to make both Post Foods and Oreo O's. Did you get that? No? Okay, well, it doesn't matter because in June of 2017, Post Brands announced that Oreo O's would make an indefinite return to stores. And now you can pretty much buy it. The good time, great taste of McDonald's. McRib for a limited time, only at McDonald's.
I feel like the McRib is classified as a seasonal option rather than a discontinued one because this item keeps coming back more times than my dad. He's a good dad. The McRib is basically a slab of ground pork shaped in a way like a rack of ribs, marinated with barbecue sauce and topped with onions and pickles. All on a bun. Mm mm mm. Ill. The McRib was first introduced in 1981. Unfortunately, sales were dismal due to the sale that pork was not as consumed frequently compared to chicken or beef, uh, which led to its removal from the menu in 1985. It would be brought back in 1989 as a seasonal item until 2006 where it randomly just makes comebacks whenever it feels like it. Uh, honestly, I don't understand how this has a cult following. I mean, just look at it. It's kind of mediocre, but whatever. To each their own. Maybe you do. Maybe I do. Yeah, maybe you do, okay? Maybe I do. Yeah, maybe you do. Yeah, maybe you do, man. Maybe I do want to be a french fry. PK chicken fries. All white meat chicken with the courage to be french fries. Yo, is the chicken really advocating to kill himself? Because that's like the vibe I'm getting off this. Burger King chicken fries were a menu item that were launched in 2005 up until 2012. They wouldn't be gone for much longer as in 2015 they would be reintroduced as a permanent menu item. Uh, short entry, but I mean it's not really discontinued. The new and improved muck spaghetti, our meatiest and cheesiest ever. It's kid love, mom approved. <laughs> Going back to McDonald's discontinued products, we have the mixed spaghetti. Launched in the late 1970s or 1980s, I really don't know. Point is, it was a failure for the most part. And the reason for its discontinuation is simpler than it seems. Customers were going to McDonald's looking for burgers, fries, and not Italian items. You know. However, over in the Philippines, mixed spaghetti is a permanent menu item as spaghetti is a staple of Filipino food. So yeah, I guess if you want to try out fast food spaghetti, you can go to Jollibee or Sabaro. I call it Little French Toast Crunch! The part of this complete breakfast only a cake can dream of. No offense, Ma, but this is French Toast my with a crunch. French Toast Crunch is a spin-off cereal of the much popular Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It was released in 1995 and what made it stand out primarily was the miniature toast shaped pieces with a French Toast flavor. Unfortunately, General Mills did the unthinkable and they changed the cereal's design into the Cinnamon Toast Crunch shape, which lowered their popularity until 2006 when the company discontinued the cereal altogether. Yet after a ton of popular demand, the cereal was brought back along with the French Toast design. Hot dogs are hot again, and they're new at McDonald's. Hot dog. McHot dogs were introduced back in 1995, yet were shortly removed thereafter. The reason for its discontinuation is unknown, but many claim it had to do with efficiency and that the hot dog didn't fit the McDonald's image. Believe it or not, the McHot dog could have been avoided if they listened to its founder. In his autobiography, Grinding It Out, The Making of McDonald's, Ray stated that he hated hot dogs and that he would vow to never serve them in his restaurant. Unfortunately, when he died in 1985, they went against his wishes and released the hot dog, only for it to fail. Coca-Cola Clear was a Japan-only exclusive launched in 2018. This was a colorless variant with a lemon-flavored taste that was meant to make up for the removal of its caramel coloring. Pretty much sounds the same as Crystal Pepsi. The drink wasn't popular amongst consumers as they just preferred regular Coke and was discontinued a year later, or at least that's what I think. I really couldn't find a definitive date, but many websites label the product as discontinued, so I'll just leave it at that. NCS was a short-lived cereal produced by Ralston Cereals in 1988. Inside the box featured two bags of cereal taking inspiration from two of the most popular games for the NES, Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda. The cereal was distributed in millions of stores in the United States and became popular amongst kids and fans of Nintendo. Sadly, this promotion was a product of its time and would be unavailable to purchase by 1989. Today, the cereal is kept as memorabilia and has been listed on auction sites like eBay to purchase. I sure hope there isn't cereal in there. You're such a brat, Bart. What? Yeah, you won't share your better finger, baby. So we're taking them. Ooh, bite size. <laughs> no, Maddie, no! <laughs> in 1992, Butterfinger would introduce BB's, tiny bite-sized pieces of Butterfinger candy coated in chocolate with a crunchy peanut butter center. God damn, doesn't that sound delicious? 
Well, the answer is yes. BBs immediately became a smash hit and seeing commercials featuring the likes of The Simpsons made this candy bar a household name. That is until 2006 where it disappeared from the market. It is speculated that the reason that this was discontinued was due to the chocolate melting too quickly before even reaching the mouth. While some saw this as a feature, many just saw this as an unnecessary mess. Now McDonald's family restaurants have America's favorite dessert on the menu, hot apple pie, like you've never seen or tasted before. The apple pie served at McDonald's has been an iconic menu item for more than half a century, and rightfully so, what's wrong with apple pie? But over the years, McDonald's has altered the menu item. Since its introduction back in 1968, the apple pies were actually deep fried, which made them a lot more crunchy and tastier according to some. And just by staring at this photo, you could see that the crust is a lot more crunchier. Yet in 1992, the deep fried apple pies were switched to baked apple pies. The reason for this change was due to the alleged health concerns of the deep fried pies. These have been called into question though as it still has the same amount of fat and 20 more calories just with less sodium. If you think it couldn't get worse for the apple pie enjoyers, it would. As in 2018, McDonald's would once again alter the apple pie, this time removing sugar and reducing the number of ingredients. So I guess the idea of returning to a simpler apple pie is just dead and buried at this point. Sending in these four delicious rolls from the heart of the bun with tasty icing you put on your way. Right now, just 99 cents. Oh my god, these were so good. I remember these very, very fondly. Based on the name alone, these were basically miniature cinnamon rolls, aka the center part of the cinnamon, and oh, these, oh, I want some right now. These were introduced at Burger King back in 1998 and had become a popular breakfast and dessert item to many fans of BK, including myself. I actually used to order these a bunch back in the day when they were like a dollar, but sadly this delicious menu item was removed in 2016 without any announcement. To this day, it is unknown why these were removed, but it was probably due to BK losing the rights to the Pillsbury brand or something. In 2018 though, Cinnaminis would make a brief return when they were an exclusive menu item through the Grubhub delivery app, although some claim that you can go inside and just order them for yourself, so yeah. Get ready for a three-dimensional shot of flavor. Introducing Doritos Jalapeno Cheddar 3D Snacks. In the 1990s, everything was 3D. Movies, games, and even food. And in 1998, Doritos would enter the third dimension with, well, 3D Doritos. Think bugles, but maybe better. And yes, I'm willing to die on the hill for that. 3D Doritos would be available in nacho cheese, zesty ranch, and jalapeno cheddar. And unlike the normal ones, these were thicker and had a cone shape, which made it easy for Dorito fans to eat it by a handful. Or maybe swallow one by accident. But despite that, they were sadly discontinued in 2005. The reason for it was due to the product declining in sales. As the internet started to expand at the time when these were discontinued, this would be brought up in many nostalgic discussions where many wish for the return of these chips. And in December of 2020, Frito-Lay announced that 3D Doritos would make a return to store shelves in two different flavors, Spicy Ranch and Chili Cheese Nacho. And man, I gotta be honest with you, the Spicy Ranch was so good. I think these were discontinued in early or mid-2023 because I have not seen these in the stores for a bit, so, but yeah, they were, they were really good. There are frozen trees coming down the street. It's raining sprinkles. It's Mickey's Parade. Mickey's Parade. Mickey's Parade is here. These were frozen desserts created by Good Humor in 1985. Other frozen desserts from Mickey's Parade lineup also included Mickey Mouse ice cream bars, sprinkle cones, and Paradise Pops. But it's mostly the ice pops that people fondly remember. The ice pops would be shaped like Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Donald, and Goofy with the flavors being cherry, grape, and orange. While I couldn't find a definitive date on when this stopped being sold, it might have happened in the early 2000s. Likely reason was due to Good Humor losing the rights to Disney characters, as is the case for most of these licensed products. Pepsi Blue. It's a blue thing. Pepsi Blue was a drink launched in 2002 in response to the success of Mountain Dew Code Red, which had become an unexpected smash hit. PepsiCo believed that it could strike gold again by creating another flavored beverage, and that was to appeal to Crips. This was a berry flavored soda described to taste like blueberries or cotton candy with a much more syrupy and sugary taste. Yeah. While this drink was popular amongst teenagers, many adults had disliked it, claiming that it was too sweet and tasted too artificial, and would be discontinued in 2004, with the drink making a brief comeback in 2021. One thing I haven't mentioned is that Pepsi Blue was made with Blue One, a food coloring banned in many countries due to the additive being linked with brain cancer. While not being the sole reason for its discontinuation, it definitely made a few people stray away from it. Yogurt, swirl your world.
wait, really? I didn't even know these were discontinued up until researching this, but uh, yeah, rip to a real one. Trix yogurt was introduced all the way back in 1988 and was yogurt swirled with two colors of flavors such as strawberry and banana, triple cherry, raspberry rainbow, berry, and many more. While it is unclear why these were discontinued in 2016, it is most likely due to low consumer demand. Yet in 2021, these would make a return, and to be honest, I honestly still didn't even know they brought them back. It could be the best tasting lettuce and tomato hamburger ever. You get a hot side hot. You get a cool side cool. New McD. LT. The McDLT was short for McDonald's lettuce and tomato and basically it was a quarter pounder in a styrofoam container in which the tomato and lettuce were separated from the rest of the burger for maximum freshness. While many saw this as an added bonus to eating McDonald's, the product was eliminated in 1998 after receiving strong criticism from environmental activists who complained about the styrofoam container not being good for the environment. Looking at you Chick-fil-A. I feel like hypothetically this could be sold again, you know, now with plant fiber plates existing and stuff, but uh, I don't know. Oreo. O and Rio. O and O. Oreo Rio. Re, 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 re. Oh my god, this just looks like overkill in my opinion. The most stuff was a limited edition pack of Oreos in which contained four times the amount of cream from a regular Oreo. This would make each cookie a total of 110 calories. Undoubtedly, many people enjoyed the cookie, however, some did believe that this was just too much stuffing for an Oreo, as it was an almost impossible task to chew. Clearly Canadian. Let the water take you there. Launched in 1988, Clearly Canadian was a refreshing and fizzy spring water with natural flavors such as strawberry, raspberry, blackberry, cherry, and peach. This drink was a favorite of many people where it would hit its peak with over $150 million in sales in 1992, as well as making several appearances in popular shows such as Seinfeld, Friends, and Dawson's Creek, making it a popular staple of the 90s. I guess you could say this was like the LaCroix of the time. While it had amassing success, the company would struggle through poor financial decisions that would result in the company filing for bankruptcy in 2009. Yet in 2015, the company was revived after a successful Indiegogo campaign rose it from the dead. And now you can just pretty much buy it at CVS or Walmart. We're heroes in a half shell, we're making a surprise. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Pie! In the year 1991, Hostess, the company best known for Twinkies and Star Spangled Ding Dongs, launched TMNT Pudding Pies. These were vanilla pies with a green color crust that resembled the shell of a turtle. Undoubtedly, it was a delicacy for many children of the time, but this product was only available for a limited time, so they were discontinued that same year, leaving many fans disappointed. With the amount of TMNT shows and movies coming out, I'm honestly surprised this hasn't made like another limited release. This kind of looks really good, not gonna lie. Sir, an idea that will change the cookie world forever! Melted chocolate middles in the cookies! Too late, we just did it! New Keebler Magic Middles. Magic Middles were shortbread cookies with a fudge or peanut butter filling. Uh, just by the looks of it, I'd probably eat a whole box and feel bad about it. But anyways, these were introduced back in 1989 and discontinued in 2011. Despite its popularity, there's still no exact reason as to why this happened. One theory is that these cookies were discontinued to make room for another line of Keebler treats that required the same equipment. Another theory is that pr the process for these cookies were too complicated, but uh, yeah. I really don't think I had these, but yeah, they look really good. Crispy M&M's are back. What are you doing? You said to tell our fans Crispy M&M's are back. Launched in 1999, Crispy M&M's were bite-sized chocolates with a crispy wafer center, making these M&M's a distinctive crunchy snack. However, these will get discontinued in 2005, yet after 9 years of mounting pressure, they decided to bring these back in early 2015. But now it seems like these have been taken off shelves, or at least rebranded to my knowledge, because now when googling Crispy M&M's, you mostly get recommended for crunchy cookie M&M's. M&M's, which is probably the same thing, maybe different, I don't know. Introducing Post Waffle Crisp, a brand new cereal with old-fashioned values. You'll love my Waffle Crisp. Waffle Crisp is a breakfast cereal that was launched in 1996. Inside the box, you can see little pieces of maple syrup flavored corn cereal in the shape of a waffle. However, this cereal was discontinued in 2018, pretty much for no apparent reason, but in 2021, they would make a return to shelves. Actually, they're McDonald's Mighty Wings, big juicy fried chicken wings that soar with a bold spicy taste. I remember Mighty Wings primarily for one thing, and that was when they were selling them for 50 cents per wing during the final days when they were on the menu. Mighty Wings were bold spicy breaded chicken wings that was a temporary menu item making its debut back in 
1990 with the item being discontinued altogether in 2003. Just when everyone thought these wings were off the menu once and for all, McDonald's would reintroduce them in late 2013 to kick off the NFL season. Yet McDonald's would bite off more than they can chew as the wings were not selling fast enough as it was reported that McDonald's still had 10 million pounds of unsold chicken wings. This eventually leading to the aforementioned discounted wings. Reasons for the slow sales vary but it was mainly due to the wings being more expensive compared to other more filling items on the menu. Another reason is probably due to the slightly spicy flavor which was not to everyone's liking and lastly um, I mean their appearance. I do remember having these and I will be honest these were really good like f what the reviewers have to say. If these items were to ever return maybe I'll actually break my sobriety for McDonald's. Goldfish flavor blasted crackers baked with real cheddar cheese. It's a wonder they're not extinct. Flavor blasted goldfish. The snack that smiles back. Goldfish. I really can't verify when this was even introduced, but many people suggest that this was discontinued in 2006 or 2007. Beverage is the target of another campaign. It's called Four Loco. It's nicknamed the blackout in a can. Four Loco is a brand of alcoholic beverages which was introduced all the way back in 2005. While it still remains to be seen in liquor stores, the beverage was a lot more intense back in its early days. See, if you still haven't caught on, Four Loco was basically a six pack and a large coffee all in a can, which made it sound like the ultimate drink for the college frat boy. Give me! Four Loco contained four unique ingredients, caffeine, taurine, wormwood, and guarana, guana, iguana, and it was this mixture of booze and caffeine that can make you think that you can take on more than one drink, but when it's all said and done, in 2010, Four Loco got into some hot water when several incidents of hospitalizations and arrests were reported across the nation, many of them having involved a caffeinated alcoholic beverage. Eventually, the amount of controversy surrounding the drink was not worth it, and soon enough, Fusion Projects, the parent company behind Four Loco, would remove the caffeine, taurine, and guarana from the beverage, making it less cool. I mean, I mean safe. Woulda. Shoulda. Yep. Josta. Better do the good stuff now. Yeah, this one is like the most 90s design ever. Josta was an energy drink launched in 1995 by PepsiCo, technically making this the first ever energy drink to be launched by a major company in the United States, as its biggest competitor, Red Bull, wouldn't hit store shelves until two years later. It was said to have a fruity and berry-like taste with a bit of spice and guarana berries. However, in 1999, Pepsi eliminated the drink. The reason being is that the drink was not as popular as expected. Making them surprisingly fun to eat. Wow, that's quite a salad. It's just a salad in a fucking cup. I really don't know how much more blunt I could get on this topic. The McSalad Shaker was a menu item introduced all the way back in 2000 at McDonald's. It was a salad packaged in a plastic cup with a side of dressing that can be poured in a cup and then shaken with a lid on top. The shakers were available in Garden, Chef, and Grilled Chicken Caesar, and this might be in a convenient way to travel on the go, the item really never caught on, and by 2003, they were removed from the menu and replaced with premium salads served on a plate. Many have taken the idea of mixed salad shakers and replicated it at home, and while the company has acknowledged its existence in an old tweet, there really haven't been any plans to return this item. And don't just drink a squeeze it, just squeeze it, squeeze it. Squeeze it. These walk so Kool Aid bursts can run. Squeezes were fruit flavored drinks created by General Mills back in 1985. They were shaped like an hourglass and used a twist off top where you would squeeze the contents out, hence the name. They came in eight unique flavors with a few limited time releases, including a cool color changing variety. Squeezes were popular in school lunches and summer days, which made them a staple to many 90s kids. Sadly, by 1993, it was reported that the drink fell almost 16%, and by 2001, General Mills announced that it would discontinue the product as the beverage was no longer a strategic focus for their snack division. Other reasons that might have led to its demise might have been the drink itself, as parents started to fall out of favor with the bottle simply being too too big to fit into a child's lunch. Not to mention squeeze it's had 16 grams of sugar compared to the aforementioned Kool-Aid Burst, which had a lot less sugar. Squeeze it's would make a limited return in 2006, yet once again they would be taken off the market a year later. Jello one, two, three. The only dessert that tops itself. Well this is quite a unique treat if I say so myself. 
Jell-O 123 is a dessert that made its debut back in 1969 and based on this commercial it came in a three layer design, a creamy layer on top, a mousse like middle, and a layer of jello on the bottom, with it coming in strawberry, raspberry, orange, cherry, and lime. The dessert was very popular amongst consumers based on its unique structure. Unfortunately, by the mid 80s, Jell-O 123 saw a decline in sales, which would cause it to be discontinued in certain parts of the country, with it still being produced in select markets in the Midwest until 1996. PB crisp, PB crisp, PB crisp. Peanut butter cream is the name of the green. PB crisp, PB crisp, PB crisp. The sweet taste that is destined for fame. Okay, out of everything on this list, yes, even you putting pops, I think this has to be the most tasty looking one. PB crisp was a very popular snack launched in 1992, and it was a graham cracker shaped like a peanut shell and filled inside with a delicious peanut butter spread. Unfortunately, as was the case with many snacks of the decade, these were discontinued in 1995 due to low sales. I will say it is a shame that this does doesn't exist anymore because when it comes to most of these gimmicky snacks, they just don't seem to make stuff like this anymore. Slam between bite-sized graham crackers. New s'mores Ritz Bits sandwiches. More in the middle. Ritz Bits s'mores were sandwich cookies filled with half chocolate and half marshmallow, making them a kid sensation in the 1990s and early 2000s. However, this snack disappeared in 2016 and was later confirmed in a tweet by Ritz themselves. Although it was never specified why it happened, it might have been due to low sales. Despite that, in 2022, in honor of National S'mores Day, Ritz announced a raffle where 300 lucky people would receive a box of a limited batch of Ritz Bits S'mores. Bad luck when Jane shouted out, as the hurrying haste of their chase surely shows, Slow Go on the Yogos. Ah, <sighs> Yogos. You know, I remember having these back in the day, only for them to disappear and eventually me forgetting about them. Yogos were fruit snacks covered in a yogurt shell, and while that sounds very delicious, and it was, they were really not the healthiest thing to eat for breakfast, as just the package contained 90 calories and about 14 grams of sugar. In comparison, that's slightly less than a candy bar. The product, along with other unhealthy snacks of the time, would gain criticism from the likes of the CDC for their high sugar and calorie content, to which has contributed to the US obesity epidemic. Eventually, by the late 2000s, Yogos would ultimately get discontinued. <laughs> Bobby's got his first chest hair? Who cares? Billy's got an Oreo Cakester. Oreo Cakesters are chocolate cupcakes with vanilla cream shaped in the way of an Oreo. They first made their debut back in 2007 until they were discontinued in 2012. Yet after 10 years, they will be brought back. While I couldn't find a concrete answer on why these were discontinued, some say it had to do with the original recipe not being as good as people remembered. New Heinz Easy Squirt Ketchup has a nozzle that makes it easy to draw. On food! Heinz Easy Squirt Ketchup was a product launched in 2000. The most striking thing about this was that it was bright and available in green, blue, purple, and a mystery bottle, which could either be orange, teal, or purple. And just like any colorful item marketed for children, it became a smash hit towards kids, and between 2000 and 2003, the company sold more than 25 million bottles of this sauce. Despite its popularity, the product was a wearing fad that lost its appeal, and by 2006, Heinz Easy Ketchup would be discontinued. Nowadays, with the public being more health conscious to you know food colorings and all that i just don't see this item returning ever again what is this a waffle taco what's next a pancake enchilada it's a slippery slope i tell you it's a gateway breakfast you know i'm honestly surprised this item isn't available this alone looks banger the waffle looks kind of dry but you know the idea is there in 2014, Taco Bell began offering breakfast and launched a breakfast lineup of its own that included the Waffle Taco, which consisted of a taco-shaped waffle filled with egg, sausage, or bacon. Unfortunately, just a year later, the Waffle Taco was pulled as sales for the product were lower than expected. Taco Bell would replace the Waffle Taco with a biscuit taco, yet that idea would fail and be removed a year later. It's a whole new kind of sandwich, stacked with premium meats, natural Swiss, and cool crisp vegetables, all on handcrafted, freshly baked bread. In 2005, Wendy saw the success of Subway and wanted to take a piece of the deli sandwich craze of the time, and their answer was Wendy's Frascatas. Wendy's Frascatas were a line of sandwiches launched in 2005 to compete with Subway. They came in four varieties, including the Frascata Club, Roasted Turkey and Basil Pesto, Black Forest Ham and Swiss, and Roasted Turkey and Swiss. After 18 months on the menu, they would ultimately be pulled, citing issues with supply, and simply that the sandwiches couldn't compete with other menu items. By 2007, all mentions of the frescata were gone. It's amazing. 
amazing how far some kids will go for Pillsbury Waffle Sticks with Dippin' Cups. That's because Waffle Sticks taste good and crispy. Core memory unlocked. I forgot all about these until researching these. Pillsbury Waffles smack harder than Eggo. I do not know why they stopped making those. Those were so banger. Anyways, Waffle Sticks were a favorite breakfast item of mine that made their debut in 2003. Unfortunately, these would be discontinued due to low sales. And, and you know what? I find that BS because I remember buying these all the time. The fact that this recent ad showed up at this exact moment proves your devices are listening. Reese's Bites were a product of the Hershey Company introduced in the mid-2000s as a chocolate-covered bite-sized piece of a regular Reese's. Everything changed in 2007 when these candies were withdrawn from the market for a pretty bizarre reason. See, apparently the candies were really soft and smoothed in texture that inadvertently caused you to swallow it without chewing and making it a choking hazard. This along with the rest of the Hershey's Bites would also be removed. Question, why take diet pills when you can enjoy AIDS? AIDS helps you lose weight without making you jittery. Yep, you heard that right. The Age Retaining Plan Candy was an appetite suppressant candy very popular between 1970 and 1980. The way you consume this product is that you take it before each meal to suppress your appetite. This would allegedly help you manage to lose about 10 pounds in 5 days. As is well known, these techniques are not healthy at all and AIDS was not spared as the supplement included benzocaine, an oral anesthetic that presumably numbed the taste buds. Sometime later, it would be changed to whatever this is. What that really is, is beyond me. But the final blow came in the 1980s when awareness for AIDS and HIV was at an all-time high. And with the AIDS virus being linked to weight loss, it really made this product super unappealing and utterly destroyed the brand's image overnight. By the late 80s, AIDS would try to salvage itself when they attempted to rebrand to Diet AIDS. Unfortunately, AIDS would be discontinued shortly thereafter. Truly an unfortunate coincidence for this company. <laughs> I'm me, Fruit Root, with my fruit flavored cereal, Fruit Root, part of your nutritious breakfast. Okay, so you know those Halloween cereals that always appear every Halloween, you know, Cow Chocola, Booberry, Frankenberry? Well, Fruit Brute is that child locked in the basement out of the bunch. Fruit Brute was a seasonal cereal launched in 1974 and it was a frosted flavored cereal with lime flavored marshmallows, a truly unusual combination. Yet by 1982, that cereal would be discontinued due to a lack of popularity compared to the other three. Probably the aftertaste of cherry lime milk is what drove people away. While not forgotten, the cereal did make a reappearance in 2013 and then once again in 2022. Before I get back. Totino's pizza rolls are so easy, kids can make them on their own. Yeah, okay, so out of all items on the iceberg, this one almost has no information. I couldn't even find when this product was introduced or discontinued, but it could have been in 2011 based on a blog talking about its discontinuation. And based on the packaging, this was a pizza roll but with cheesy taco meat filling. A at least that's what I think it was. Now with Batman, the cereal. Him down. In 1989, Ralston Cereals, also the people who made Nintendo cereal, produced the cereal as a promotional tie-in for the 1989 Tim Burton Batman movie. The cereal was shaped like a bat and as it said on a box, has a nutty honey flavor. Yet what made it quite unique to other promotional cereals of the time was that it came with a Batman shaped coin bank. Also can we talk about the box, it just looks so cool, I, I don't think I've ever seen a black cereal box before. It's the cola. Pepsi AM, because you need a good excuse to drink soda at 8 a.m. In 1989, Pepsi test marketed a variant of Pepsi which contained 28% more caffeine than its classic variant and included a sweet and citrusy flavor with a hint of vanilla. The reason for this drink's creation was due to the fact that at the time, coffee was being consumed by less people, whereas soda and other soft drinks saw a rise in popularity. Despite that, by 1990 the drink was discontinued with the reason being that there wasn't sufficient interest among consumers. Although its shelf life was short, Pepsi would try again with other coffee soda hybrids with the release of Pepsi Kona in 1996 and a European exclusive drink called Pepsi Cappuccino. New Giggles cookies. Two kinds of cream in each funny face. Are you gonna eat that? Giggle cookies were a package of cookies with smiley faces launched in 1985, basically the snack that smiles back. 
The cookies were available in vanilla, chocolate, and later peanut butter and had fudge and vanilla cream inside of it. By 1990, the cookies were discontinued with no reason whatsoever. Perhaps people just thought the cookies looked weird. Who knows? Also, weird thing about it was this commercial that had a child who is laughing uncontrollably like if he's on drugs or something. This one is a strange one for it to be discontinued considering how popular cinnamon flavor is. Cinnamon Tic Tacs, if you haven't caught on, are cinnamon flavored Tic Tacs. The original red pill. Believe it or not, but these have been around since the 1970s and would be quietly discontinued in 2009. The reason for it was that they weren't a growth flavor, yet due to outrage, they would make a return in 2013, only to be discontinued two years later. Ew. Hubba Bubba, as you may know, is that pink chewing gum brand created by the Wrigley Company back in 1979. Gum is mostly what the company is known for, but back in 1988, Wrigley would mix the taste of Hubba Bubba gum and soda to create this diabetic enigma. This novelty drink had a pink color which made it truly stand out to any drink that wasn't Pepto-Bismol. By the early 1990s, Hubba Bubba soda was discontinued, and just by people commenting on it, some people kind of thought it looked gross. Personally, I fall into that camp. But, you know, whatever. Really incredible. Treat yourself to the rich and creamy cheesecake taste of Philadelphia snack bars. Here you go, Fluffy. They're a little taste of heaven. In 1999, Kraft Foods launched Philadelphia cheese snack bars, which were snacks consisting of a graham cracker base with a thick cheesecake filling on top. They were available in chocolate chip, strawberry, white chocolate, raspberry, and classic cheesecake. Unfortunately, they were discontinued between 2003 and 2005. According to Urban Treats, the reason for the product being discontinued was due to challenges within manufacturing capabilities. Although the item has been gone for almost 20 years, there have been plenty of websites with a recipe on how to make this on your own. Last but not least, New tropical Sprite Remix. Remix. Ending part one is Sprite Remix. This was a caffeine-free line of beverages that lasted from 2002 to 2005. Starting off with Sprite Remix Tropical launching in 2002, Berry Clear in 2004, and Aruba Jam in 2005. While the drink was very popular during its initial year, sales would start to decline over the years. Along with the negative reception of its high sugar intake, Sprite Remix's fate was more than certain. While the original formula remains a memory to many, in 2015 the drink would be reintroduced, albeit with less sugar and a more natural fruit flavor. Today you could buy a 24 pack of this stuff on Amazon for almost $60. Jeez, I wonder if it's like freshly bottled or kept in storage from like 3 years ago. I don't know. Regardless, everyone seems to like it. Well guys, that was part one of the discontinued food and snacks iceberg. I did have to cut the video into two parts due to time constraints, but I mean, to be honest, this video is almost 50 minutes long, so, you know, kind of think this video has gone long enough. But before I end it, I would like one last thing to say. It really makes me grateful that you guys spend part of your time either listening or watching my videos. It, it really, really means a lot, and I cannot stress that enough, so thank you. 2024 is going to be an interesting year. We still have the highly anticipated Nickelodeon history video. And guys, I'm sorry if I'm sounding like a broken record, but the video is still coming. I know it's taking longer than expected, but rest assured, we put as much heart into the video as much as the first one. Secondly, I'm planning to expand the channel. As you guys may or may not know, 95% of the time I research, write, record, and edit all my videos. All on my own, really. And as much as I like producing content for you guys, I simply just cannot do this on my own. Which is why I'm soon going to hire someone who can help assist with the writing and editing process for the channel, as well as broaden my horizons on brand new video topics. Uh, I do hope it goes well, but only time will tell. Um, I'm pretty much been rambling for a bit, so I'm just going to end it here. Part 2 will be coming out soon, so in the meantime, let me know in the comments what were your favorite snacks growing up. Thank you all once again for watching, my name is Lewis, and I am out.